Hey kids, welcome to our new series called Bugs. Do you have a favorite bug? Maybe a, a ladybug? I know not all of you are real big fans of bugs. Do any of you have a bug that may be your least favorite? A roach? Well, even if you don't really like bugs, you can learn some important lessons from them. In fact, this series, we're going to be learning some big lessons from these small creatures. To find out which bug we will start learning from today, I want you to watch this little video. Hey everybody, my name is Mo, Mo Skeeto, and I'm here to tell you about my new virtual reality video game called Splat. Some games have you finding fake animals and creatures, but mine, you're finding real creatures, bugs to be precise. The slogan is, gotta catch them all entirely. I had to add that last line in for legal reasons. Anyway, each bug kit comes with a bug guide, bug catchers, and pajamas. Oh, no, wait, those are mine. Today, we're gonna do a demonstration on how to play the game. With these state-of-the-art bug catchers, you'll find all sorts of bugs, which is a goal of the game, but the ultimate goal is to find the bed bug. Mm. When I was a kid, my mommy used to say, good night, sleep tight, don't let the bed bugs bite. <laughs> Ever since then, I was obsessed with finding a bed bug of my very own. So, I created the game. Today, we're in my backyard looking for bugs to catch. Oh, how silly of me. You're probably wondering what a bed bug looks like. Well, you see, that's the problem because I've never actually seen one, so I drew this picture of what I thought they might look like. See? Oh, hang on. I think I see something. You know what that means. Time to put on my virtual reality goggles and say, gotta catch them all entirely. I feel good about those tosses. Let's go see what we got. Applesauce. Let's see what's in the other one. A fish? Ugh, yuck. Let's see what's in this one. Oh, it looks like we did catch something. Let me check my bug guide. Hmm, let's see. A ladybug? No. A Kit Kat? No. Oh, I know what this is. This is a praying mantis. They call it a praying mantis because its hands are in the shape that looks like it's always praying. Now, I don't know if it's really praying, but it can serve as a great reminder to us. Every time we see a praying mantis, we can be reminded to pray to God. You know, sometimes I forget how important prayer is, but that's what's so cool about bugs. They're small creatures, but they can teach us big lessons. Prayer is and always will be our connection to God, so we should pray every chance we get, and the praying mantis can remind us to do that. Well, I better set this little guy free back into his natural habitat, but I have heard that praying mantises are delicious. <laughs> oh no. I was wrong. I may have gotten that fact wrong, Ugh. but I do know this. Today in your lesson, you're gonna learn about when to pray, how to pray, and why you should pray. It's gonna be amazing. Well, until next time, gotta catch them all entire. entire. How cool. Did you know, oh my goodness, he scared me. The praying mantis helps us to remember to pray. Prayer is something that many kids don't understand. They don't understand why we should pray, when we should pray, or how we should pray. Today we're going to learn about prayer and why it must be a part of our lives. But before we do, we need to find out what's up. What's up, what's up? What's up, what's up? Welcome back kids, I'm here again to tell you what is up. Kind of like a cheer chant type of thing, so I'm gonna show you first and then we can say it together. So it goes P-R-A-Y, lift your eyes up to the sky and pray. 
So that's that's our what's up, but the motions are gonna be P R A Y. Lift your eyes up to the sky, pray. I need you guys all to stand up, gather your parents, gather your siblings, everybody get around the screen and do this with me. What's up? P R A Y. Lift your eyes up to the sky, pray. And try not to spit when you do it because people won't like that. So one more time. Gotta get your cardio in for the day. Okay, what's up? P R A Y. Lift your eyes up to the sky and pray. Namaste. I'm just kidding. Okay, that is what is up. <laughs>
quiet prayer to the Lord. This is what he said. Lord, please have mercy on me. I am a sinner and I need your help. Did you notice a difference between those two stories, those two men? Jesus said that God rejected the fancy prayer of the Pharisee because it didn't come from his heart. It was all for show. But God answered the prayer of the tax collector because it was from his heart. He came before God with a humble attitude. Prayer doesn't have to be fancy. You just talk to God from your heart. Talk to him just like you would your best friend. If you need healing, you say, God, I need you to heal me. If you need forgiveness, you say, God, please forgive me. It doesn't matter the words you say as long as it comes from your heart. We are going to learn all about prayer today and how it must be a part of our daily lives. Stories of the Bible. The parable of the Pharisee and tax collector. This is Jesus. hey Who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like walking on water. Oh, hey guys. And even raised people from the dead. Uh, wahoo! One day, Jesus told this story to some people who thought they were very good and looked down on everyone else. Two men went to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee, and the other was a tax collector. Tax collectors were hated by many people. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed this prayer. I thank you, God, that I am not bad like other people, cheaters and sinners, I'm certainly not like that tax collector. Ha <laughs> ha! I fast and give up eating food twice a week, and I give you a tenth of everything I earn. But the tax collector stood at a distance and dared not even lift his eyes to heaven as he prayed. Instead, he beat his chest because he was so sad, saying, God, have mercy on me, for I am a sinner. Then Jesus said, I tell you, when the tax collector went home, he was right with God, but the Pharisee was not right with God. Everyone who makes himself great will be made humble, but everyone who makes himself humble will be made great. Oh, I didn't see you there. Okay, all, all the ladies, I need you guys to do the what's up with me. Okay. P. R. A. Y. Lift your eyes up to the sky and pray. All right, good job. Now I need all the gentlemen to stand up and do it with me. Okay, ready? Count of three. Three, two, one. P. R. A. Y. Lift your eyes up to the sky and pray. Keep on praying. First Thessalonians 5.17. Today we've been talking about the power of prayer. We began by looking at the praying mantis, and although the praying mantis probably doesn't pray, every time we see one, we can be reminded that God wants us to pray. Prayer should be a part of our lives every single day. There are several questions I want to answer. First, why should I pray? Why do you think I should pray? The main reason we pray is to stay connected to God. What does that mean? Well, I'm glad you asked. How many of you have a best friend? How many of you love spending time with your best friend? I bet all of you said you did. That's what makes him or her your best friend. You would love to spend as much time as you possibly could with them. You have fun with them, you talk to them, you play games, and just love being around them. Well, the Bible says that we have a friend who sticks closer than anyone else, and that friend is Jesus. Jesus wants to be our best friend. He wants to spend time with us. He wants to talk to us. Can you imagine never talking to your best friend and how hurt they would be if you decided, I'm just not going to talk to them anymore? How much more does Jesus get sad, do you think, 
when we are too busy to talk to him, we must pray, talk to him every day. And that builds our relationship. Another question I want to talk about is, when should we pray? Should we pray only before our meals? Nah. I know, we should pray only before bedtime, right? No. Should we pray only when we are in trouble? The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5.17 that we should keep on praying. That means we should pray all of the time. Now, it doesn't mean that we should just walk around praying and ignoring everybody else. It means that every chance we get that we should talk to God and let him talk to us. We should talk to him every day. How should I pray? Or how should we pray? This is such an important question. Some people have different ideas about what they think is the right way to pray. Different people pray different ways. Some people pray loud. Now, there's nothing wrong with praying loud, and there's nothing wrong with playing quiet. Some people pray with big words. Now, there's nothing wrong with using big words, but is that the only way to pray? No! You can talk to God just like you talk to your best friend. God just wants us to spend time talking to Him. I know many of you are scared to pray because maybe you don't know what to say. Maybe you feel you don't know what to say. For the next couple of minutes, Miss Elizabeth and I are going to share a short plan with you using the letters to pray. P, R, A, and Y. P stands for praise. The best way to start your time with God is by telling him how great and wonderful he is. Everyone loves to be appreciated. God is no different. He loves to hear how much we love him. Start your time with God by telling him how thankful you are for all that he has done for you and for how much you love him. R, repent. After you spend time praising God, then it's time to repent. Repent is a word that means confess your sins to God, ask him to forgive you and help you never make that mistake again. Maybe you have lied or disobeyed your parents. Perhaps you talked about something or someone and cheated on a test. No matter what sin you have committed, ask God to forgive you and help you turn away from that sin. A, ask for others. After you have asked forgiveness and repented of your sin, then it's time to focus on others. Maybe you have friends or family who are sick or need Jesus. Perhaps you know someone who is having a hard time. This is a good time to ask God to meet their need and to help them. Why you? After you praise and repent and ask for others, then it's time to focus on you and the needs you have. Don't just ask for things you want. Ask God to help you follow his plan for your life. Now is the P-R-A-Y method, the only way to pray, not at all. It's not important how you pray. What's most important is that you pray. You need to pray and spend time with God every single day. What's up? P-R-A-Y, lift your eyes up to the sky, pray! That was me. Hello and welcome to the Bug Review. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's what we're going with today. Yes. Um, we're gonna ask some questions and hopefully you guys can follow along with us and go over them and answer them correctly with us. Yes, or, cool, cool. or wrong. One or the other. Preferably correctly, you know? Yes. Make sure you've learned something. It's okay. So, speaking of correctly, Devante, you should get this. Okay. Okay? What's up today? Ooh, okay. It's P R A Y. Lift your eyes up to the sky and pray. Woo woo! All right. Okay. Yeah, that was the. Okay. Good. Uh, next question mm -hmm. Who were the two men in our Bible story? Ooh, they were. I was gonna say tall, but they're never told to be tall. Uh, a Pharisee and a tax collector. Nice, mm -hmm. nice. They could have been tall. You never they, know. They could have been tall. That's relative. Okay. Mm -hmm. True or false? Okay. Ready for this? The Pharisee prayed a quiet, simple prayer. Um. Well, Pharisee. C means water. Water is cold, cold, calm, so true. <laughs> How did you get that? Nope. 
Mm. Nope, not the case at all. Sorry there, Devante. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's get, okay. Sorry, next question. Okay. True or false? Mm -hmm. The tax collector left because he knew his prayer wouldn't be good. He left? He left. Um, true or false? Yes. He left? I don't remember ever anywhere talking about he left, so false? That is correct. Your reasoning is much better than mine. <laughs> okay. You are correct. Whose prayer in the story should our prayer be like? It should be like, so these are our options, the Pharisees or the tax collector? Yep. The tax collector. Woo! Mm -hmm. Okay, good job. Okay, so according to our lesson today, the P in pray stands for blank. Okay. Automatically, my brain always goes to pray, but that's the acronym, so <laughs> I would have to say it's another P word with like praise. Nice job. Okay. Um, according to our lesson today, the R in prayer stands for blank. Reset, retire, repent. Repent. Uh, according to our lesson today, the A in pray stands for what? Um, a, oh, um, ask for others. Yes. You're... So, like, I'm gonna pray and ask mm -hmm. for others. Yes, amen. Mm -hmm. Okay. According to our lesson today, um, the Y stands for what? It stands for yourself. As in myself, yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It stands for you. Mm -hmm. uh, good job. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Um, this is our last question. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? I'm so ready. Okay. Where was our power verse found? Because I read it, I know, but I couldn't remember before. It's First Thessalonians, but I don't know where it's found. Okay, well, the, the chapter is my favorite number. 12. Nope, bad friend. First Thessalonians 5, 17. 17 is where it is. Well, thank you so much for being with us in our bug review. Keep on praying. First Thessalonians 5, 17. Thanks for joining us today as we entered into this brand new series on bugs. And don't forget to P-R-A-Y and lift your eyes up to the sky and pray. We'll see you guys next time. <laughs>